Has anybody here had back pain that was like made it hard to get out of bed or hard to get up from standing or anything like that? Does, it, does everybody here know how to get up from a lying down position the proper way? I'm going to show you just for the video's sake, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to lie on this table here and I'm going to show you the best way to get up, okay? So one of the things that I see, well, first off, and one of the things that, that really is disheartening for me is to see people in their 50s and 60s, I mean, uh, 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 and older, people who are so out of shape that they can't go on and off the table. You know, it's like they don't, just don't move during the day. They don't go for walks. They don't get any exercise. And when they lie down on the table, they can't get up. So I'm like, what do they do when they're on the couch at home? Or how do they get out of bed? So I try, and they always, without a doubt, what they want to do is they want to do this. You know, they want to do this to get up. And that's like the worst thing you can do. So here's, your, here's, how, you, here's how you get up. You roll on your side like this. And you're rolling on your side. And you've got both arms in front of you. And you'd be amazed. People, you know, they roll over. they got their arm behind them. And then they're like all twisted up like, like a knot. So what you do is you kind of, you got an elbow here and a hand here and your feet here. So you kind of drop your feet off the edge and you push yourself up like that. Everybody catch that? Is that new to anybody? Has everybody seen that? Seen that. Yeah, I think everybody, probably everybody here has seen that, but I wanted to get it on the video. So that's the proper way to get up. Okay. Now, what do you do if you hurt your back? Do you lie down? Yeah. Well, you, can, you, you seek help, of course, you know. But you know, let, let's say it happens on you know, Sunday morning and I'm out of town or something and I can't help you that day. And you hurt your back. What are you going to do? Put ice on it. Okay. So you can put ice on it. Do you move? Do you rest? Probably yeah. rest. Okay. Probably rest. Okay. Uh, here's, here's, here's what I'm going to say about that. Okay. Sometimes people find that heat works. But if you don't know what's going on, ice is always better than heat because ice is safe. Heat can harm and ice is safe. You want to use ice for 20 minutes, you can use it 20 on and 20 off as much as you want. You can use it 20 on, 20 off all day, but don't leave it on more than 20 minutes, and for, especially for the first week of an injury, I wouldn't recommend using the heat at all. I mean, if it has, especially if you have any radiating pain, you might have potentially a disc problem, and if you put heat on it that loosens the tissue, what could happen? You could spill more jelly out, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. So heat can be really dangerous if you have a bulging disc. So if anybody calls up, um, as a matter of fact, one, you know, I use a very gentle method. I don't usually turn people on their side and do big twists and big forceful adjustments on low backs and stuff like that. I just don't find it's necessary. But one of the early, my early chiropractic mentors was like, people would come to see him from all over the world for his low back treatments. He was really, really good with discs. And I, did that disc treatment I did with you the other day. I learned directly from him. Mm -hmm. And um, if anybody called up, he had his front desk trained. They said they had back pain. They said, you've been on heat. They said, okay, we need to wait two weeks before you come in. You need to be on ice for two weeks before you can even come in. Really? It's that potentially that dangerous. So just, just kind of an interesting, interesting thing there. Okay, so ice. Ice, not heat. And then... Um, the other thing to cover is, it's like we got an alarm going on somewhere, is a, is a movement versus rest. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here, here's what I'm gonna, here's what I'm gonna say about that. Now, first off, you know, I mean, if you hurt your back and you know, you've got numbness or you, know, you lose your bowel control or something like that, you know, sometimes those situations can be considered by the medical doctors to be a medical emergency. Um, so just, you know, with that note aside, but um, typically, uh, has anybody ever hurt their back and you can't straighten up like this? Like this is the way you look? You've been like that? Yeah. I have people come in here like this all the time. They just can't straighten up. They've got contracted muscles or they've got a, a, a nerve pinch. If you hurt your back and you're like this, lie down. But if you can stand up straight and walk around, and it feels good to walk around, then movement can really be helpful for you. 
Don't overdo it. Don't go be hiking Mount Everest, but you can walk up and down the hallway in the house, or you can walk on a level driveway to keep, you know, just keep moving. It's kind of like if you sprain your ankle. If it's a slight sprain, you can kind of walk it off, but it's, if you damage the tissue, then you, you need to rest it and, and wrap it and give the support and let it heal before you put weight on. It's kind of the same thing with your back. Okay? Follow me with that. Does that make sense? So, so if you hurt your back and you're like this, lie down. <laughs> Because it, it just, you know, if you're going to have to, if you have to walk like this, you're probably going to do more harm than good. And we had, we've had a couple of people like that just in the last couple of weeks. We see people like that all the time. So um, it's, it, it's very, very common. Let me check my list and see if there's anything else. And um, what we're going to do. Uh, all right. So we're kind of now at the point of, Questions. So, if you want to, let's do the handouts while I've got while we're doing the questions. Sure. Does anybody have any questions? I do. When you mentioned about the trunk of your car, it was such a good example. Everybody has that where they're pulling something out of there. What is the correct way then on a trunk uh, when you're say you're lifting something? That's a good you're question. Out. Yeah. I, okay. So I, what's the, so what's the best way to lift? Okay. Let's 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 just do the best way to lift in general because I didn't cover that. And so let's, yeah, of course, you know, if you're lifting something off the floor, it's kind of the same thing as in a car, right? Mm -hmm. You want to um, you know, keep your back straight and actually sometimes pooching the butt out a little bit. They call it the J spine. Okay. Like this can, can take pressure. You're going to come down like this and keep everything in alignment. Keep your head on the head and the back as, as straight as, as possible. And when you lift up, you're lifting with your legs mm -hmm. like that. Because if you do like this, yeah. you're using your back to lift. And kind of the same thing with the car. So you've got to get in like this, keep your back straight, and, and you know, bend your knees, and lift as much as you can. You know, you're going to have to use some upper body because it's out in front of you. Right. That's the trick. So you, you want to pull it as close as you can to you, and then lift up with your legs as much as possible. And that's one of the things that I tell people about posture is... You know, the, the head is made to be over the shoulder. And if it's out here, it weighs like 10 more pounds than if it's back here. So like if you're holding, say you're holding a 10 pound weight here, and you hold the 10 pound weight there, it's not 10 pounds, it's 15 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. Or 20. You can hold it a lot longer here than out there. Same thing with your head. And people wonder why they've got neck and shoulder pain and headaches, and they come in and they're like this. Well, I have horrible headaches, I don't understand why. And that's like, <laughs> Yeah, so, so I can adjust people till the cows come home, but unless they make some activities of daily living changes, you can go ahead and hand, hand, those, hand those handouts out. I found this handout online the other day, and this is like a great handout. I kind of uh, lifted it from, you know, off the internet. But it, I, I saw this, it's like, this is everything I want to go over tonight, and they had it almost exactly like I was going to do it. So we're going to give you the handout. We're going to give you a gift. And we're going to give you uh, a gift. Hand out any gift. Now, there's one thing that I would like to like to say once we get the hand out. Once we get the hand out, I'm, one more thing that I'd like to say. Nellie, you've been to my dinner talk, right? Okay. Now the thing about spinal problems, you know, one thing is if, if you have a, a vertebrae out of alignment, if the vertebrae are out of alignment and they're stuck out of alignment, we call that a spinal subluxation. And you can stretch around this, you know, you feel it wants to pop, but it won't pop, or sometimes it'll pop around it a little bit and it feels a little better because you get a little endorphin release. But just imagine if you're walking and this is stuck out of place here, and you're walking, it's grinding every single day. Every time you bend and move, it's grinding, grinding, grinding. It wear, these are the discs in between here. It wears out the discs, and the discs can't get their fluid because they get their fluid from pumping. They don't get, actually, there's no blood supply really to the disc, so they don't get their fluid from blood, they get it actually from pumping. It's called imbibition or drinking of fluid from surrounding tissue. So when you move, it pumps up the disc. That's one of the reasons that 
some of the things that we show. I'm going to show you some stretches and exercises here in just a little bit. Um, the, uh, uh, this can cause damage to the tissue. It can cause damage to the joints. It can cause damage to the disc. And this is the process of uh, stress-related osteoarthritis or degenerative disc disease. Okay? Um, some people have it genetically, so that's why I mentioned stress-related degenerative disc and osteoarthritis because some people have it genetically, but um, over time you get bone spurs, you get thin discs, you get uh, impingement of the nerves, and the thing is you can't, don't necessarily feel this. You know, when you're six years old and you get hit in the head with a football or you fall off a wall or you jump off a barn, as there was one week I had three people that jumped off a barn when they were little kids, right? It's like, huh? What's up with that? And uh, so, you know, you get up and you shake it off and you feel pretty good. And then, say so you're six, and then when you're 13, they say, well, she's got scoliosis. He's got scoliosis. And you go, well, where did that come from? It must be genetic, right? Because somebody else in our family has scoliosis too. But, but not the sacrum out, not a bone out, just like a twig. You bend it and everything else has to grow around it, right? Now, like I say, you may not feel any pain with it. For years. You can go for 10 or 20 or 30 years and not feel a single pain. And then one day you do this or you just bend over to tie your shoe or you bend over and get a Kleenex and sneeze and all of a sudden you're in the bed and you can't move with back pain, peeing in a bottle because you can't get up to go to the bathroom. Like, how in the world did that happen? Well, the way that happens is this process. It didn't happen, you know, tying your shoe didn't do that. Reaching up on the top shelf for a coffee cup didn't do it. It was just the very last thing that you could handle in your body's <coughs> process of adapting to that original injury that you had when you were six years old or you had when you were born. The very first subluxations or misalignments can happen at birth. And it's very, very common for, for children to come out crooked or come around with a cord around their neck or they have to be pulled out with suction. I mean, sometimes they can use 35 or 60 pounds on, on a baby's head to pull a baby out, and, and the neck is stretched out long like that. You think that affects the spine for a lifetime, and of course it does. So, but you know, so they so they go through. So so a child goes, you know, all of a sudden they've got ear infections. You know, they're three, and they have two or three, and they have an ear infection. They get on antibiotics, which makes ear infections worse, and she had more ear infections. So they're they're on repeated doses of antibiotics throughout their life. And we had, we had a young uh, boy who came in here. Uh, he was 11 years old and was in school. And um, he missed so much school that he, they were going to label him developmentally disabled and put him in a special class because he was sick so much and missed so much school. Right? And he came in. They brought him in one summer. And he came in regularly for the summer. Well, guess what happened that fall? He got perfect attendance awards. They were so happy. He got, he got perfect attendance awards for the fall and the spring, and we never saw him again. It's like, Mom, bring him back and let me check him, you know? And, and we've got a, a little girl in here who comes in, and she has migraines like four days a week. And uh, I talked to her mom, and I said, you know, let's, um, let me just see her for, for two times a week for three weeks, and if it makes a dent in her headaches, then we know we might be able to help her and um, we can figure out what to do from there. So she came in twice a week for three, no, she came in once a week for three, for three weeks, and her headaches went from every other day to one a week, and basically I never saw her again. And I said, this little girl's probably gonna be on headache medicine for the rest of her life. And, and do you think that frustrates me? I mean, I can tell you, that's really, really frustrating for me. Because I really want to help her. I mean, we can change her life. So these things, you know, does she does she have neck pain? Not really. But her neck is really, really tight, and I can feel, you know, we didn't do x-rays on her, but I can feel when I feel her vertebrae that there's some out of place and there's a lot of muscular tension in her neck. And when we adjust her, all the muscles around her neck relax and she takes deeper breath and she gets relaxed on the table and she's much more calm when she leaves. So, you know, I mean, it, 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 it's just kind of goofy to me. Um, that, that they wouldn't follow through with care for her, but some people do, and we get great results. But the trick with this is, 
And I'm going to show you this. This is one of the things we talk about in our dinner talk. This is a picture of what's called the autonomic nervous system. And if you notice, every region of the spine regulates some organ or function. Okay? So, um, we feel pain with 10 to 20 percent of our nervous system. 10 to 20 percent. So if there's a problem, we may or may not feel pain. And does the heart feel pain? Do the lungs feel pain if your spine is pinched? No, they don't. But do people have irregular heartbeats? Do they have difficulty catching a deep breath? Do they have reflux? Indigestion? Do they have constipation? Do they have diarrhea? Do they have painful menses? Do they have, you know, I mean, do guys have ED? I mean, all these things can be related to the spine. And a lot of times, um, people come in for a neck, neck or back pain, uh, and they'll sit down and, you know, this is, this is a true story. Dr. Whittington, I didn't tell you this. I came in because you know, my neck and my back hurt, but I have had irritable bowel my entire life. As a matter of fact, I've been in experimental studies at Duke, and nobody's been able to help me. And I've been under care for six weeks, and it's gone. Could this have anything to do with that? <laughs> you know, but I don't treat irritable bowel. If somebody comes in, I can't, I can't advertise I treat irritable bowel. No, I don't, but what we do is we restore function to the spine and restore the nerve flow to the different areas. You know, the, the nerve flow from this area is heart and lung. And down here in the middle of the spine, it's digestion and blood sugar. You know, uh, fat, fat handling, liver, um, and as we get further down, it's bowel, bladder, and reproductive organs. And so, uh, this we're you know we're really looking at you know, is this a back problem or a health problem? So you got back pain, you just about surely got a health problem. Good with it. Do we have the brochures for them for for that? Did you give them a brochure? And we printed the brochures. No, the. Do you have a back problem and health problem? Oh, yes. So we're going to give you some of those. Okay, now if you have to lie down, I'm going to show you one more thing. If you have to lie down, one of the best things you can do, and I'm probably going to want a model for this. Can I get a model? I don't want to lie down. Can I get somebody? Okay, so come on up here. If you can lie on your back. Thank you, Diane. Let's give Diane a big hand. Woohoo! Okay. So if you hurt your back, the most, well, you, you, and, and you need to do some home care, one of the best things you can do is lie with your knees bent, bend your knees up, and you can even prop them on a chair so that they're like this. Okay. You can prop them on a chair so they're like this. This is called the 90-90 position because it's 90 degrees there and 90 degrees there. And you're going to do some pelvic tilts or pelvic rocks. Okay, so you're going to just kind of roll your hip down. About, okay, up. Not your legs. Okay. Just your hip. Yeah, there you go. Kind of like that. I feel, yep, the stretch. Okay, and let it roll forward. And don't come, you don't know, have to come up very far. Because this is not an exercise. Okay, not your legs, just your hips. There you go. So it's kind of a pelvic rock. Thank you, Diane. That's great. And what that does, you can go ahead and sit up and show us the right way to get up now. Yeah. With okay. your shoulder and your... There you go. Okay, that's great. So, um, what that does is it actually pumps fluid. It pumps fluid into the joints and the discs. By doing that tilt? Yeah. It, it, it pumps fluid through the, and it's what you're doing is pumping the disc. It's not like an abdominal exercise where you're going to get strength from it. You're creating movement in there, getting movement into, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of like, you know, sometimes walking it off is good, but you're not weight bearing. You're kind of getting some movement in there, and it pumps the fluid into the disc and into the joints, and it can help really tissue. Also, if you, you can do that while you're on ice. And you can do that and use a little ice and 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. And that's really the best home care for that pain. Okay. Um, any other questions? Um, what's the risk of laying on ice for more than 20 minutes? Um, it just loses its benefit. 
it loses the benefit and acts more like heat physiologically. Mm -hmm. The body begins to respond to it more like heat instead of ice. And it's better to leave it on for 20 minutes and let it get really good and cold and then take it off and the body will flood it in with, you know, with, with blood and warm it up and then you put the, it's kind of like that's another pumping type motion. Some people use heat and ice on and off and you know, th that may be okay, especially as long as you don't have any like radiating pain or disc problem or not like this or anything like that. You know, it may be okay. But I just prefer, especially in the beginning, to go with ice. And if you, if you have a bruise, like a sprained ankle or something, as long as there's any blood in the tissue, as long as you see any black or blue, you always want to use ice. Okay. You have to, you want to wait until that blood, under the black or blue, is gone until you use any heat. Well, thanks, everybody, uh, for coming. And uh, we're, we have some certificates we're going to give you on the way out that you can share or use yourself with, with a friend. and. Uh, uh, we're happy to have you here tonight. Thanks for coming. And if anybody, what we're going to do is we're going to break, but if anybody has any questions, you can stick around. And I'll answer questions while we set the room back up. Okay? All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.